Lucy Ledby, Serial Killer. Why Did She Kill? Part 17. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. This has been a comprehensive examination of much information about Lucy Ledby. The trial lasted months, and I have gone through a lot of information much of which I have not necessarily included because it essentially repeats points that are already demonstrated through other evidence. When it comes to making a determination about an individual, I look at an initial baseline categorization that this person is an empath. Are they a normal? Are they narcissistic? Or are they a narcissist? Where psychopathy is relevant, more or accurately, antisocial personality disorder, that is included also, but that is rarer. Although there are some that maintain that Lucy Letby is innocent and there has been a miscarriage of justice, there has been several convictions that she has been found a murderer of babies and has also attempted to murder others. She is currently in prison and at this time, will never be released. Her crimes have caused revulsion, grief, anger, as a consequence of not only the commission of these offences, but also the fact that she was able to get away with them undetected for so long, and, even when concerns were being pointed out, certain hospital administrators did not act promptly. Indeed, as you have heard from the evidence, they actively supported Letby. We have examined material across a wide range of aspects of her life, what her childhood was like, what her teenage years were like, what she was like with regard to her relationships with her friends, what was her relationship like with her parents, how was she in the workplace, how did she conduct herself on arrest and when she was being questioned by the police, how did she appear in court and her behaviours in relation to being examined and cross-examined. Her conduct surrounding the grievance procedure and the securing of an apology. The fact that she had a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder and that repeatedly talked about how she had been disoriented as a consequence of moving prisons, that she was depressed and anxious. We've analysed some of the text messages. We've looked at the relationship that she had with the doctor, which, to my mind, We have only seen a part of it, and that in all likelihood it was an intimate relationship, and for reasons that I have already explained, both parties are denying that it was such. We've analysed the handwritten notes that she provided, we've looked at what that would mean, and we've gone through in detail both the nature of her defence and the nature of her offending, and the judge's sentencing remarks, pulling together so much information which assists us in determining what she is. Many people remain flummoxed as to why she committed these crimes. On the face of it, she appears like a normal, kind individual, that she was hard-working, that she was well thought of, that many of her colleagues became her friends, and that it simply beggars belief and offends the very notion of people's understanding of the world that not only could somebody murder young babies, but also the fact of somebody who looked so normal, so innocent, could behave with what so many see as inherent evil. Many people have struggled to get a toehold on understanding what it is that has motivated her. Did something cause her to break? Was she always broken? Is there some underlying condition There has been discussion amongst experts who disagree with regard to what they believe has caused her to behave this way. Some say that we will never know. Others have talked about it being Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Others have talked about a blue code addiction. Others have spoken about a God complex. Others concern that it might be some kind of psychotic break. Others have suggested that schizophrenia was at play. 
Some just simply believe that she is evil. In order to make an accurate determination, it is necessary to go through a considerable body of evidence, looking at it over a sustained period of time, not just the period of time when the offences were committed, but to delve back into her past to compare how she was with what she then did. Was it a facade or something else that caused her to behave in the manner that she did? That hitherto an individual who appeared to be so kind and so normal, was it just simply a facade or did something break within her? Many, many questions. You have listened most carefully to my analysis. And as I always do, I take you through the evidence, offering suggestions as to what it might mean to cause you to think about it, to flex your own thoughts, not to immediately tell you what it is, but to give suggestions, to lead you in particular directions, to contemplate the potential outcomes where certain pieces of evidence could mean two, three, four, five different things, dependent upon the perspective that is applied to them. Such a robust approach is necessary. We need to consider all of this material in the aggregate. And as I have gone through it, I have started to narrow it down in particular directions as we discount certain things based upon the evidence as we have heard it. What I am going to do in a final part is deliver my judgment as to what she is and the reasons why. I am going to provide you with the concluding analysis of what she is. Is she an empath with some other problem? Is she a normal with some other problem? Is she a narcissist? Is she a psychopath? Or is it something else altogether? And then in so doing, once I have categorized her in relation to the appropriate evidence, I will also then explain to you what it is that motivated her to kill, why she killed, why she chose babies, why she did it with regularity, and also to consider the possibility that those victims that she has been convicted of killing and attempting to kill may not be the end of the story. Ahead of that, I'm going to place a poll in the community section of this channel so that you can vote on what you think that she is ahead of the outcome, which will be delivered in the course of Thursday. Thank you very much for your attendance at the live streams where the videos have been premiered. I've observed with great interest your debates, comments and observations, many of which have shown real consideration of the issues. Now, having heard everything that I've told you, allied with your own perhaps reading of the matter and other material that you've seen in broadcast news, you have an opportunity now to determine what you think Lucy Letby is and also what youth may think the driving behaviour was behind her murdering children, ahead of my final analysis. So join me, H.G. Tudor, in the course of Thursday, at a time that will be announced, so you're aware of it, to determine what Lucy Letby is and why she killed. <laughs>